For these people, every day is a psychedelic experience. No, oh, man. This is grass. You, you mean marijuana? Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 movie druggies. Tony. For this list, we're taking a look at cinema's most entertaining characters that regularly use illegal drugs, be it crack, smack, dope, coke, or any of that other good stuff. Not that we condone that kind of thing. Yo. Hello, shorty. What are you doing? Nothing. Sitting here watching the game, smoking some butt. Number 10, Thurgood Jenkins, Half Baked. Hi, everyone. My name is Thurgood. Hi, Hi Thurgood. Hi. Being a self-proclaimed pot enthusiast, it's only natural that Dave Chappelle would make his leading man debut in this cult stoner comedy. I can't even smoke weed in peace. Thurgood Jenkins is a deadbeat loser, but at least he has plenty of weed and good buddies to smoke it with. Hey guys, just shut up about the weed for two seconds, all right? I don't want this girl to know I smoke. When one of his friends lands in the slammer, Thurgood's menial existence is suddenly given purpose as he attempts to fundraise bail money by selling marijuana. You know we sell this. I don't know if you knew that. Along the way, he learns that there's more to life than Mary Jane, like his girlfriend, ironically named Mary Jane Potman. Could you give this letter to Mary Jane Patman? <laughs> sure thing, kid. Number nine, Jordan Belfort, The Wolf of Wall Street. <laughs> One, two, three! Leading men addicted to drugs and power is one of the many trademarks of Martin Scorsese's movies. Johnny Azoff. Hey, Jordan Belfort, nice to meet you. The best example is Jordan Belfort, a stockbroker who chugs down quaaludes like they're candy. Are you fucking high? I can't move on to the more FBI. Jordan has taken so many drugs that he can barely tell the difference between reality and his delusions. <sighs> his perception of a slow drive home can just as easily be a hit and run in real life. The quaalude or lewd, as it is commonly referred to, was first synthesized in 1951 by an Indian doctor, that's dots not feathers, as a sedative, and was prescribed to stressed out housewives with sleep disorders. While the Wolf of Wall Street might not be 100% accurate, it is completely true to Jordan's drug-induced vision of his mad life. It took 90 minutes for these little f***ers to kick in, but once they did, pow! I mean, I had skipped the tingle phase and went straight to the drool phase. Tell me where you are. Don't These little me. bastards were so strong, I discovered a whole new phase, the cerebral palsy phase. Number eight, Saul Silver, Pineapple Express. What's it called? Pineapple Express. Saul is as laid back as stoners come. Let's just go over there and chill out. With way too much free time on his hands, he spends all day in his pajamas, selling pot and setting up teepees on his bed. His relaxed, low-functioning nature perfectly complements his customer-slash-best friend, Dale Denton, who's just as lazy and incompetent, but slightly more level-headed. You do. You have the easiest job on earth. You do smoke weed all day. <laughs> That's true. Saul might seem like more trouble than he's worth, getting mixed up with corrupt cops and lethal drug lords. Oh, shit. But any life-threatening scenario is a blast with this fun-loving druggie by your side. Come on up. I buzzed it. Open the door when I buzz it. Buzz it in three seconds, exactly. One, two. Does it work? On three. I did it on three. On one, two, three, go. Just on three. Number seven, Harry Goldfarb, Requiem for a Dream. Let's do this right, man. Like many addicts, Harry walks a fine line between reality and paranoid misconceptions. His character definitely puts an emphasis on the dark side of a druggy lifestyle. My mom is killing me. Let's have a look. <sighs> the more reliant Harry becomes on heroin, the more uncertain, dizzy, and desperate his state of mind becomes. You're the most beautiful girl in the world. You're my dream. 
Along with the film's other three main characters, his world gradually shifts into a nightmare he can't wake up from. I can't take it, man. Man. My arm! My arm! As glamorous and fun as drugs may appear, Harry's cautionary tale shows us just how easily they can be a descent into hell. <laughs> Number six, George Young, Blow. Muchas gracias. Want to get ahead in the world without getting a real job? Then maybe you should consider a career in dealing dope and smuggling cocaine. When you're carrying drugs across the border, the idea is to remain calm. It worked out great for George Young. Well, not really. What do you want me to say? I'm in prison. Ashamed of his poor upbringing, this long-haired blondie sees the drug business as an easy route to the American dream. We were young, rich, and in love. Through charms, street smarts, and salesmanship, he manages to get on top. A lot of people are pissed off. Didn't matter. I was Escobar's guy. George eventually finds that this lifestyle can be full of highs, but it's also full of lows. I was busted set up by the FBI and the DEA. That didn't bother me. Number five, Harold Lee and Kumar Patel, the Harold and Kumar franchise. I wish we had some more weed. This hard-working Korean-American and irresponsible Indian-American zany misadventures started with a car ride to White Castle. I haven't been to White Castle in ages. Dude, I'm telling you, there's one right by that multiplex in New Brunswick. Nice. Somehow, that simple road trip to satisfy their munchies escalated into a fiasco involving a freaky tow truck driver and an escaped cheetah. We're gonna die. No, 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 hold on, hold on. Cheetahs are used to eating gazelles and shit. They're not known for eating him. Oh! That is a corpse. We're gonna die. The two have gotten into even crazier shenanigans over the years, landing in Guantanamo Bay. So what are you guys in here for? Forgiving the United States. Taste their own medicine. And shooting Santa Claus. And then I shot Santa Claus in the fucking face. He's real, and I shot him in the face. No matter where their drug trips take them, though, you can always count on Harold and Kumar's movies to be full of profanity, nudity, violence, and fellow druggie Neil Patrick Harris. Come on, dudes, let's pick up some trim at a strip club. The doogie line always works on strippers. Lap dance. Number four, Mark Rent Boy Renton, train spotting. Oh, yes, yeah, Mark Renton. Look, uh, wonder, could you help me out? This dark British comedy demonstrates the side effects of drug addiction, both from a comedic standpoint and a tragic standpoint. Do you know what they do to people like me inside? They cut your balls off and flush them down the fucking toilet. Calm down. You're not going to jail. Oh, well, that's very easy for you to say, Diane. Tired of his life consumed by heroin and toilet diving, <laughs> Mark Renton is convinced he can get off the junk for good. I'm sorry, Tommy. Got any gear on you? No, I'm clean, man. As you can imagine, however, it doesn't take long for him to fall back into his old habits. This was to be my final hit. But let's be clear about this. There's final hits and final hits. What kind was this to be? Renton's life is one of the most disturbing, if not disgusting, representations of an addict. It seems, however, I really am the luckiest guy in the world. Several years of addiction right in the middle of an epidemic, surrounded by the living dead. While his journey is certainly a weird and surreal one, that's just part of the road to sobriety. Stop! <laughs> Number three, Jay and Silent Bob, The View of Skewniverse. I'll tell you what you need is a fatty boom fatty blunt, and then I guarantee you see a sailboat, an ocean, and maybe even some of big titty mermaids doing some of that lesbian shit. These drug dealers are a common thread in Kevin Smith's View Askewniverse, having supporting roles in several of his films, and even scoring their own spin-off movie. Any movie based on Jane Silent Bob are gonna lick balls, because they both, in fact, lick balls. While Smith's Silent Bob rarely says anything, Jason Mewes J shoots his foul mouth off enough for both of them. On an easygoing day, Jay and Silent Bob can be found selling drugs in front of a quick stop or in a mall. 
noise, noise, smoking weed, smoking weed, doing coke, drinking beers. On an active day, they'll be stealing monkeys. Steal a monkey? Shit, no problem. And preventing the apocalypse. Holy shit, Sound Bob's an instrument of God? In any case, every day ends with snoochie boochies. Drinking beers, 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 rolling fatties, smoking blunts. Who smokes the blunts? Who smoke the blunts? Rolling blunts and smoking blunts. Number two, Raul Duke, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. Hi there! Uh, my name? Uh, Raul Duke, on the list. This whole movie is a giant acid trip, and at the center of it is Raul Duke, a hyperactive journalist manically narrating his life. We had two bags of grass, 75 pellets of mescaline, five sheets of high-powered blotter acid, a salt shaker half full of cocaine, a whole galaxy of multicolored uppers, downers, screamers, laughers, also a quarter tequila, quarter rum, case of beer. With a cigarette holder fixed in his mouth and a suitcase of drugs, Raul sets out on an hallucinogenic voyage full of bizarre imagery. But someone was looking for you. <laughs> No, we haven't done anything yet. No. This guy's so out of touch with his surroundings that he doesn't even know when he's thinking to himself and when he's speaking out loud. Jesus, did I say, I say that? that? Or just think it? Was I talking? Did they hear me? If there was ever somebody who epitomized all the insanity, confusion, and paranoia associated with Vegas, it's him. If you have any trouble, remember, you can always send a telegram to the right people. Before we light up our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. Quarter the double cheese and sausage. Right here, dude. <laughs> you can't kind of send me, man. I'll kill you, man. Until I was once a shameless full-time dope fiend. was just bullshitting. And you know this, man. Oh. My career's slowed down a little lately. What do you do for the I recreation? Oh, the usual. Number one, Cheech and Chong, the Cheech and Chong franchise. Uh, is it heavy stuff, man? <laughs> Will it blow me away? <laughs> Before there was Jay and Silent Bob or Harold and Kumar, there was Cheech and Chong. Oh, you guys in speed, man? The original pot-smoking duo initially gained popularity through their stand-up routine and Grammy Award-winning comedy album. <laughs> I'm blind! Oh, shit, I'm blind! Man. What's that, man? <laughs> this led to six movies, taking them to Amsterdam. Twee acteurs dus uit Amerika. Dat zijn Mr. Cheech and Mr. Tsung. Across the U.S. border. Okay, just be cool. How long you guys been in Mexico? A week. And even into outer space. And we got sucked up by the spaceship, man. Yeah. And they give us some space coke, man. Look at this is space coke. You never tasted this before, man. While the age of free love is over, the era's dazed spirit lives on through these icons of the stoner community. Oh, yeah, well, we uh, were stopping by to see if we could score some smoke, man. You know, like, we've been all over the neighborhood, you know, and nobody's gotten none, you know? To date, Cheech and Chong are still having awesome trips via marijuana. I just remembered, man, I got some hash. Acid. Hey, man, I never had no acid before, man. And dog shit. What's Labrador? It's dog shit. What? Yeah, my dog ate my stash, man. Do you agree with our list? The question mark was emphasized. Who's your favorite movie druggie? For more trippy top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Oh, those guys are back! <laughs>